Okay, playing a rapid, so a little bit longer. It's a five minute and eight second game. Reason why I've chosen this particular game is I want to just go through a nice steady process of this is the final video in the rating session rating sessions. Um, so I'm not going to bother going for the 1700, the 1800, etc. Um, our our mini group goes up to 1800 so it's 0 to 1800 but these concepts will take you through to the 1800 if you're really focused on it so the reason why I'm stopping at the 1600 mark is because I believe for me um, if you reach 1600 um, and you're focused on developing your skills after that point it's much the same stuff that you need to do to keep on developing um, no matter what anyone else tells you um, this is what I've felt for myself in being able to develop my, my game is that um, I've achieved a solid 1600 for years on one particular site and uh, I've not moved or budged from there I'm a solid 1600 1600 um, 1650 going up to 600 and, yeah, 1690 um, I don't play that often on the site but I'm a quality 1600 and I'm so proud to be a quality 1600 um, I get some fantastic games going on there and it's it's really good fun so in my head it's a it's my training ground where I understand and learn and play against many different types of players and it really is good to actually just see the variances in the different skill levels but I constantly hover around the 1600 mark on purpose and it's not sandbagging or whatever it is because I'm not doing anything to anybody I don't win any money I don't go to any tournaments or anything like that with this 1600 1600 is my badge of honor on this particular site so in all the games going forward now the idea is to ignore the ratings that are right in front of you and play the board not the rating you can tell the movements that are on the board you utilize what you know against the board and not the player okay so the experience that you're building if you're playing a wide variety of people you're then going to clock up your own sort of gauge bar as to what you need to do with each of your moves. Yeah, I would challenge anybody to actually do the remove the um, ratings thing. You can go to your settings, it's in site settings and basically just click on it and remove it. I wonder if I can do it now while we're in this game. I hope I don't mess anything up. So, preferences, site settings, and then at the bottom, show player rating. I've got it as yes at the minute. If I click no, and then if we go back to the game, then as you can see, the ratings disappeared. So, I would challenge anyone to basically just utilize this for at least a month or something it's quite scary yeah and just play your game and the little notification that it says on there on the site setting it says this allows hiding all rates ratings from the website to help focus on the chess and that's simply what we want to do when we're developing yeah, we want to focus on the chess and we don't want to see what rating it is because it spoils our enjoyment we then go we expect this person to play like this in the early days when you're learning about ratings yes do it but as you've developed so this is why this is the last video we're assuming now you've developed you feel confident about what you're doing and now let's throw that all away okay so he's attacking down here this bishop doesn't have any protection but we can't hit it just yet and just going to smaller piece attack this just to try and claw some time back a little bit it's eight second increment so we should be okay again now he's got protection with the queen and he's looking to come down and attack the knight we can still swing around here no issues there 
don't want to do the Fisher Spassky thing, you know, take in here and then they, they drop the pawn. So let's get that out of the window. Queen could move to the side because he's got like a little bit of an attack thing going in here. Pawn's going to drop, so that's going to cause a little bit of a sting. So we're going to eventually have to move here. So there's a few things we can do. We can swing right over here, attacking this pawn, so then we can attack it. Or I don't think we can do that though because his bishop will take. In fact, his bishop can take anyway if we move here because he's got three pieces attacking this pawn. Ooh, yeah, so the bishop's just going to take the pawn. Bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes. Ooh, so he's got a position already on us. Good job we're talking about it. Is there any way of blocking that at all? There isn't, is the knight comes there, knight takes. I don't think there is, is there? Can't even get a rook in there. There, knight, knight around. No, still going to take. Come here, bishop takes. I'm just thinking, can we get in time to block? But I don't think we will. Ah, I should have been focused rather than doing my narration. That's a bit of an issue. So, I'm going to resign myself to the fact that we've lost the pawn. So then, if we bring this here anyway, bishop takes, bishop takes. Queen comes down. Take the queen, rook takes. Rook's owning the file. Then we can swing our rook across, I suppose. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. So I bring my queen here, though, so that he doesn't actually, if he doesn't want to... But I think he will do now. He's had plenty of time. We're on 1 minute 51. So we're going to have to balance it out at some stage with the rooks owning the file here. That might be the only saving grace on that sort, that score. And I've forgotten my thread of thought now because we're in a little bit of a situation here. Yeah, it's about ratings, isn't it? It just ignore the ratings now. Look at the board. Play the board it's really quite hard because <laughs> I've done this exercise a few times I think I might I don't know if I've covered a video with this um, you know not using the actual rating numbers and wow it's kind of surreal and then I went back in just to have a look at the ratings and I did get the shock on one game I got it close for the for three of them but one I, I was a bit way out and they were like 1100 or something I said wow they, they must be like 1600 or something uh, so I got that one a bit wrong but the others were very close so he's not gone there he's attacking the knight but he's still focused on this you can tell so if we bring this here and attack the bishop then he's still going here anyway I hope he doesn't you know I hope he's forgotten something maybe oh and he's, he's not doing it but our knight's kind of trapped, isn't it? So if the bishop comes and attacks, we're going to have to open up our king. Now he's facing our queen. Okay, 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 okay. He's facing our queen, but he's no longer got the major attack on here. So I think I'm just going to bring this up here now and bring the knight back. That... I think that was definitely a missed opportunity for that moment. He still does have a pressure base, but if we can get our rook facing opposite their queen, yeah, he is coming with the bishop. Right, okay. I'm actually taking it off. I, <laughs> I must I must like seeing the, the um, numbers. You know, it's it's really weird. It's really weird. And I'm not even one for looking at, you know, ratings and stuff like that, but it's quite happy, it's quite pleasing just seeing the numbers there. So he's coming down, pressuring our king area. We want to really focus on, maybe bring this rook, facing off their king. Our knight does have space here. He's going to explode all around our king, but I, I just think... I won't say it's just a small pawn attack because it can be quite devastating. And he's doing another pawn attack as well. He's blocked in his bishop. Got space here, but his bishop is there. And we do have the potential for this then, don't we? To attack this. But that's going to be blocked down, isn't it? 
but it's something, isn't it? We could push here. If it takes... Nah, I'm not doing that one. Um, let's go here and see if we get away with attacking this pawn. He might just drop down. Is there a build-up somewhere else? Because it's got a whole heap of attacks coming on. Which are just like... It's almost like a mist of fog just coming down over, over my pieces. So one of two moves, this pawn or this pawn, defending. But if he does that, he's still attacking our pawn in the centre, we can take, it's nothing major, he can still drop that down. So maybe we're not going to do that. It looked good in my head, but it's still the Fisher Spassky, because he can just drop, he can just drop it. And where does the bishop go then? The queen's not defend. Ooh. Queen attack. It's attacking our queen. Shall we? Shall we? And shall we? As best possible. He's going to take with the rook and he's spoiling my attack on his bishop. He doesn't want my knight to get into the game. Got nothing else to attack it, so his rook is going to be fairly safe there. Yeah, damn, damn, damn. Come round this way, get the knight into the game. I think it's going to be more impactive around here. I think he's going to be touching here. Then we go here. Yeah, so he's touching there. Let's attack the rook. You have no place in the center now. My king is going to be opened up a little bit. Maybe, or is he just going to come down onto the bishop? Oh, he's trapping my bishop. Let's go here. Got to be aware. This is a bit tasty. So I think I've covered off what we were talking about in terms of not looking at the rating anymore. Just play the board as best possible. And when it comes to maybe a critical move, then do all your assessments based on all the information you've got. Check him out. Yeah. Rating, rating, rating. What's the behaviours that you understand as being, oh, my king is so opened up now. Boom, boom. Crikey. What are the behaviours that you expect from them per se? Could push the pawn up now. But it's like, I'm babysitting this pawn. This rook's going to come there. He's got a two on one. Ay, ay, ay. Take the pawn, open up my king. Take the pawn, open up the king. Take the pawn, open up the king. Yeah, so he's doing so much work. He's such a lazy player. You know, it's lazy movements. All he's doing is pushing the pawns. He doesn't know how to work his pieces together. We need to make him pay the price. So if we push this pawn up, and if he then brings this, then we can push this pawn to support the pawn. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. 44 seconds, damn. Right, I need to move now, I need to move. Let's go. So, they're lazy, so we need to, basically in a nutshell, oh, he's blocking down, right, okay, so he's um, potentially coming here, so he's gonna have a two on one. Right, okay, 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 so let's uh, hit this pawn here, see if we can get our knight activated. His rookie's looking to come here, put a two on one, bishop takes, da da da. Um, so he's still going for the rook, so he's not. Let's take this. I think I sh should be okay. Take there, take there. Bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop's on the rook. Rook, doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah, okay, 44 seconds. I don't have to take his bishop, by the way, but let's go here. So surprisingly, it's even Stevens at the moment, apart from time-wise. But that eight seconds should... Oh, sha! what was that? Whoa, come on now, cut me some slack. Got a nice passer here. It's got no protection on it, but we've got a passer. Okay, okay. So... As we know, working pieces together is probably going to be their weakness, and it's hopefully showing quite nicely. Um, his rook can come here. So if we get rid of our bishop, then his rook's coming here, taking this pawn off. 
time is running down let's hit this bishop it's going to come with the check on the king taking the pawn that might have been a little bit of an oversight but we'll see we'll see so I don't believe he is working his pieces together yeah he's gone for the check so that's pretty straightforward for me let's go here yeah let's go here Rook comes across, puts a check on. Hopefully if he gets that his bishop's under attack at some point. Nice little passer going on. I think he's coming. No, he can't come there yet. Well, he can actually. He can. Attacking the pawn. Looks a bit funny, but he can do it. Maybe he comes down with his rook. No, he comes with a check, so we're going to go and attack his bishop. it's taken but it's taken but it's mm, okay let's go here still got a piece under attack so he has to move the bishop so he's plus one at the moment we gave him that pawn here with the bishop we do have a pass oh it's giving up pieces but he's got loads of pawns there now but it's actually a minor piece down which is a bit of a shame that's the working the pieces together bit but he does have these pawns so I'm going to shut up now and focus let's go here should have brought the bishop actually attacking but let's see how this transpires uh, so let's um, go here could have hit here but I'm not taking anything at the minute am I it's blocked off my passer, my beautiful passer. So we've got the time back anyway. This eight second increment is um, quite nice. We've been able to do the narration and <laughs> we've made massive, massive blunders with during the game because we were getting excited about the subject matter. But hopefully you're seeing what I'm trying to sort of say here. It doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't have to be you know the best thing since sliced bread and and when you're looking at the people's ratings if you can categorize them in your own way you know like what we just did today just now we were on a loser but we looked at the 1600 and we said well what moves is he making he's making lazy moves we haven't won yet so i need to shut up again so now we can take this pawn here and attack the bishop and they've resigned whoop okay so <clears throat> that's that to me is a good ending to the story about the ratings and, um, and well they can't believe that I won as well so they've done a report thing it's still whirring away uh, six in as it finished six inaccuracies two mistakes two blunders for me five inaccuracies two mistakes one blunder for them so they performed better than what we did, and we knew that. But because we understood the character of the um, of the player, and um, we were able to circumvent their situation on the board. It's a weird thing, but I know what I'm trying to say is that if you know the characters of the ratings in your own world, what you kind of expect from them, then you can turn it on their head and turn it against them. So in this last game for looking at the ratings, taking a peek into the characteristics and the traits of the ratings, um, this was the 1600 one. And the 1600 one is not too far away from the 15 mark, you know, the 1500 mark. It's just that they don't tend to show the traits of the 1500. They'll show more the traits of the 1400. Um, very strange. Um, but these are the types of things I think, you know, uh, this, people have different ways of doing chess. You know, they'll probably laugh at my suggestion of what I'm talking about here, about looking at the ratings and then categorizing and basically saying, this is what I expect from that rating, etc., etc. And then when you've learned that, knocking it out of the window and then putting it in as part of your answer process. 
so that you've got a load of things to choose from when it comes to a pressure situation you can select a better potential value move that's all it's about really being able to select that potential value move all your research kicks in all of the concepts kick in smaller pieces attacking higher pieces let's break this game down we were talking through most of the first half of this so this was mostly done by knee jerk reaction natural flow if you like so they're developing their night and I believe they got a totally better position than what we did for the mid part of this uh, game but we're still there and we castled okay so they've castled as well so that's a good sign you know so good level 1600 and then they do a small pawn move here so let's break this pawn move down pawn move is stopping our bishop from coming here from the moment they do this move that's basically them signifying that I'm in defense mode I don't know what to do yep that small move there I mean yes it's stopping the bishop from moving up but it's not it's not stopping it from doing anything else there could have been other attacks that they could have done um, I don't know what the gauge bar so it's probably happy with that it's plus 1.6 and then it dropped actually to 1.1 yeah so what is it suggesting f3 where's f3 at well, that's just as bad <laughs> that's just as bad I mean so basically it's like saying well I don't have anything yeah I don't have anything to bring to the party but the gauge bar is still showing that they're actually winning strange anyway so basically they've done nothing now they're going I don't really know what to do I'm waiting for you to punch yourself out as 1600s they've got a little bit more knowledge about position on the board only slightly slightly different to the um 1500 because the 1500 does their two you know their two combination and then they're not they look like they're not bothered about their position after that combination and usually their position isn't as good as they thought it would be the 1600 is aware of the two punch combination and keeping the tension and they probably go to like a free punch combination till the 1600 because they feel more confident about the position where they're going to end up in the problem they have is working the pieces together because still they'll then revert back to even the level of a 1300 when they actually do the move most of the time that's what I've found okay so as they're pushing down with the pawns I think this is where we started paying a little bit of attention because they're starting to push pawns down it's giving us a blunder for us attacking their queen I don't have an issue with that it's probably saying because it's got this potential pressure on this pawn yeah so we probably needed to leave that pawn there because as we were mentioning in the um, game I think they, get, they let us off yeah they let us off of that and we had a plan set if they were going to continue with that type of maneuver and so we brought our queen across here same blunder obviously look how strong that is for them and it doesn't actually suggest the bishop taking the pawn though this is what i'm actually thinking they were going to be doing so this is what i thought they were going to do and then take here and then the queen takes and then if we did take i'm not sure oh yeah we'll take and then the rook takes and then we bring our rook across here a challenge in does he then or does he go back i think he's going to want to own the file as a 1600 they're not that yeah they bring it back is he going to have that patience to bring it back yeah bring it back he's got the knight protecting yep so then at that stage there what would we do we'd be thinking of trying to own the file with the rook probably won't bring the knight back because it's then blocking the passageway so in and then out for the king yeah so that's potentially what they're going to do so that allows the bishop to come here yeah that type of thing so that's how it played that it was going to play out in my mind and I didn't have any issues with that so long as I could potentially get ownership of the file that doesn't look too bad to me 
So if that had happened, I, was, I wouldn't have lost any sleep. It would have been okay. But then they decided to attack our knight. Okay, so then we started attacking their bishop. And then we thought, ooh, our knight could get trapped. But the main principle about it is, I did say, well, they, that's been lazy. It's been really lazy with these moves that they're making. Because they're just making pawn moves. And behind the pawns, there's always a weakness. And you have to support the pawn with your other higher rated play, uh, pieces. So that's using up your resource for the wrong thing. They, sh they should be looking to either take pieces off the board, manage key squares or key pieces, um, you know, really focusing rather than focusing on protecting their own pieces. So the bishop moves, again, losing a little bit of tempi. Now we're breathing a sigh of relief that he's not taken there. But as we've just shown, it, it wasn't going to be anything major anyway. I think it would improve our position quite nicely if he had taken. So now that we know the, the ilk of the player, we know what they're like, we're basically going, OK, well, it looks like they're lazy. They don't know what to do. So in essence, all we need to do now is make sure we can find good position on the board get our pieces working together as best possible again another lazy move which is the pawn pushing down uh, the little scud missiles working their way around our king but gauge bar is happy for them it's got plus 3.9 on here i wasn't happy with it it didn't phase me one bit what phased me was i was not reading the opponent and i wanted to get reading the opponent properly i thought i had with the laziness and everything but I still needed to get my pieces in appropriate positions and get reading even more. So now we're facing off the queen. Simple, straightforward stuff with the rook. So feeling even better about that. Then another lazy move with the pawn. I'm saying this player doesn't know how to work his pieces together. I think I mentioned it in the, in the game. Um, so it looks like they're going to struggle going towards any type of end of this game because they're not confident about us utilizing their pieces so they've done like their one two three combination now it's fizzling out and they're relying on the little pawns to do the big work for them so we move our queen across gauge bar doesn't like that it's saying that they're out and out winning almost i didn't see it you know it's for them to prove this out and out win so now they come for the exchange of the queen. I think they thought they were going to be stealthy, you know, thinking I'm not going to see that. So it's a nice touch. So we grab, and then we grab, and now it's like a simple take fest. And he did take with the rook, but then obviously that gives his rook a little bit of an issue, really, because it is in the center of the board. So utilizing our own concepts to understand, well, okay, is it really strong? No, because in our mind, that rook is in the center of the board and it's not actually doing anything great <coughs> he does have weak little pawns that are supported by the bishop type thing and the position of his rook can easily be um, challenged quite nicely so they push the pawn down looking to try and open up our king area but on balance um, because we've had these types of experiences before it's not going to work too well for them positionally it looks nice because they've got them all down there but they really have to work and have pieces in the correct positions for this to be damaging you'd be looking at having a queen or something you know to sit in this position here you know so that the king can't move anywhere type thing so it's not as major as it looks so we attack the higher piece with the lesser piece so the king moves and this has got a massive massive blunder mark here didn't see it don't care about it it's um job done for me so it's clearing the pathway for our pieces quite nicely reducing down the amount of pieces that they've got around our king area so we push up now to block everything off and then they push their pawn down it's out and out winning for white here but i genuinely didn't feel it didn't feel it at all so we did say yes they're going to potentially be attacking here with the two on one but again that is nothing major our king can move to safety quite nicely so then they capture the rook we capture back owning the file but with the two bishops being there it's not really a good ownership as we've mentioned before probably stay away from that um going forward during the game 
So we bring our king up now protecting the bishop and then they come with a lovely bishop strike here but we do have a safe spot to keep contact with our bishop. Gauge bar is slowly creeping up so it's now plus 0.8 and again from this point on this solidified in our head that the 1600 is falling into the characteristics that we know of which is working pieces together okay granted yes didn't see the pawn being loose okay uh, i had imagined that this pawn was already here so we probably should have taken a little bit of time to block that off but in any event it makes no difference Okay, so we're attacking a higher piece with a lesser piece they attack so we can move our king and we expected the rook to come across and that's showing a major major blunder there and don't know don't think we actually took the advantage but we'll see anyway so the king comes up and attacks the bishop so he's now got two pieces under attack well three pieces actually he's got the bishop under attack from the pawn king's attacking the bishop and the rook is attacking his rook okay but he takes so we can grab and position it on the board now it's looking fairly tasty for us because now we're a minor piece up and that was the crux of this particular game in the fact that the opponent wasn't confident about the end game wasn't confident about working their pieces together and that was really apparent when they were doing these pawn pushes earlier on so from that point on because we've developed our end game we we kind of understand that okay we can make it difficult for them and they can try and make it difficult for us but if they don't know how to work their pieces together and they're not confident about end game they're gonna kind of struggle so we basically threw a net over all of the stuff that they were attempting to do we tied the net up rolled them into a little ball and then we threw them into the um little treasure ch treasure chest as part of our experiment so the bishop moves back so we bring the bishop up lo loads of blunder marks going all over and knight comes up here looking maybe to get taken off by the bishop but doesn't do that i bring this pawn here just to stop any shenanigans of this pawn pushing down trying to put pressure on was expecting this type of stuff but in any event we do have the pawn that can be taken and he does come down and at that point then they resign so it was a very interesting game playing against 1600 uh, I do like the 1600s there uh, I think they're stalwart players they do have their quirky little problems and issues some just love being at 1600 and they're not interested in going any further and the others that are wanting to get, go further are developing their skills more so around understanding that they have to work their pieces together they have to choose the potential viable moves before anything else and working their pe teams pieces together as a team can't say that often enough is a key thing small attacks as well they got they try and get rid of those small attacks with the pawns and really try and what's the word now not lock down so much and when they've dried up they've got to really come out of the shell and really drive the game rather than sitting back and letting the opponent come to them and driving the game because then you lose that tempo i have seriously lost my voice now i am happy to have completed this um, whole session for um, looking at ratings and looking at the characteristics of the ratings and then being able to gel that concept into the answer process to help us drive forward potential viable moves going forward.